Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Today we're going to tie a um, PMD sparkle dot. I got some 12 aught Vivas and a TMC 100 size 16 in the vise. I'm going to get a good coat of thread on the hook for a foundation. I've got some deer hair that I've already cut and stacked. Got the tips coming out of the stacker forward. I'm just going to take that deer hair and do not let go of your backs of your hair. Just kind of hold on to them as you're seating that hair. And then just bring your scissors up underneath them while you continue to hold them. And that way you get a nice clean cut. Okay. So now I've got my taper. My wing looks like it's in the right position. We'll be fine there. So now I'm going to set my tail. I'm going to come back to the bend of the hook. It's usually set somewhere just behind the point on most of these hooks anymore, if that helps at all. I'm going to take some rust antron and I'm going to divide it. I'm just going to pull off about half of it. I want to sparse out this tail a little bit. Some folks tie their sparkle duds with a real heavy butt on them or tail on them, and I, I don't know. I don't like that as well as I do something that's a little bit sparser, and this is probably heavier than I normally would tie. Again, I'm trying to keep the body even. That's why I'm making some extra wraps. I'm going to leave that hanging out the back. Next, I'm going to take a uh, turkey bite, <clears throat> and I'm going to cut that off of uh, the quill here. And the turkey bites have two sides, and when you look at them, and I don't know if you can pick this up or not, but there is a real shiny edge on them. And that you want facing back, okay? So I'm going to tie it in face up to start. And the reason I do that is that you get not that rough edge. There's one side that'll stand up and give you some segmentation, which is great on emergers and stuff, but I don't really like it on the dry fly. Can the fish tell? Probably not. Does it make a big deal? Probably not. But that's just me and my compulsive ways. So I'm going to bring this bite up through here, making sure that I try to get that transparent edge delay on there a little bit to give the body some segmentation. It'll come right up against your wing. Okay, I'm going to turn that, trim that off. Okay, so my tail needs to be about the length of the body, so I'm going to cut that now. So it's done. <clears throat> I still haven't stood my wing up. And the reason is I, um, I generally uh, use my thread and dubbing to do the work for me while I'm seating that in place. It sets the wing up and everything's locked in. And again, I've talked about this before. You get dubbing out of your bag and it's got some little lumps in it. So just grab your dubbing and just gently stroke it, pulling it apart and breaking up those lumps and getting your fibers all lined up and smoothed out. That way you don't get any bumps in your dubbing when you're dubbing these. These are a real fine bodied fly and we, um, we want them smooth, you know, to look like the, the real McCoy. So little small amounts of dubbing. I'm going to lay that on there. And I'll just dub my way down the thread. If you're going to do uh, PMDs, wash your hands real good before you start putting on pale yellow dubbing because it'll turn brown from your fingers. And it's anybody's guess as to how much dubbing you're really going to use until you get to tie in the fly. So I'm going to stop right here and I probably won't have enough and I'll have to dub a little more on, but it's easier than trying to get this really tightly wound dubbing off of the thread. I'm going to come back onto the body, get it right up against the wing. Stand the wing up. I'm going to come in front of it and lock that wing into position right there. Okay. I 
could have put some more dubbing on the front, but there's the idea. You've got your buy it body, PMD, Comparadon, or Sparkle Done for that matter. 